Hello, my fellow hunters. Today, I only have one question to ask. Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Are you feeling it? Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Art thou feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? And you better think about your answer carefully. Today goes out to the Carapacians, the crabs of Monster Hunter, in all their glory. So while they aren't as immediately... Oh my god! ...as the fanciful Elder Dragons and their otherworldly power... I mean, they are just giant fucking crabs. You gotta understand that back in today, they were truly magical and fascinating in their own right. So grab your shell, get comfy, because you're not ready for this information. As in, like, carapacion. Sion. Look, I'm not proud of that, but I, I've sat here for like five minutes in silence trying to think of a crab joke, and I, frankly, I just want to move on, on, on with my life, so... Shut the fuck up. And uh, let's begin with their introduction. Back in Monster Hunter Freedom 2, well, I, of course, was completely blind back then, and I was playing through, having enjoyed the first game, I saw the little Hermitars. I, I say little, I mean, it's still like half the size of a person, which is like, it's huge for a crab, but it's not kind of small in terms of Monster Hunter. But the thought instantly occurred, hang on, they like throwing a small monster at you and then, surprise, there's a huge leadery, dromy, alfery version. So I got excited for the potential, and lo and behold, not long later, Daimyo Hermitar was the hunt target. And let's just say, when I saw him... <laughs> Look, I'm not about to say any of the crabs are in my all-time favorite monsters, but they're definitely up there. Because you got to understand, they were so vastly different to anything that had come before in just the first iteration of the game, where everything was rathalossy framed, flying type wyverny. It was a huge moment of, hang on, we can have essentially. Anything, the potential, any animal, oh my. And that, honestly, seeing Hermitar was one of the click, <laughs> I love this series moments for me. And because of that, I will always respect him and his kin. Less so immediately after when we had to face piece of shit Blankonga, who is one of the most infuriatingly annoying garbage monsters I've ever seen on Known to Man. But that's... Fine, you can't win them all, though I will admit the monkeys are fantastic, but they are not today's star, no. So, they are, as I said, essentially just a giant crab, so they do a lot of crab things that crabs do. They they crab around. They're, they're just big crabs, guys. But hermit crabs specifically are, of course, the inspiration. Hermit crabs... IRL are honestly right proper good. I think they are cute little animals and they make great pets and they have some quirky little customs that are just amazing. For example, when it comes time to upgrade shell size, because they're growing little precious so-and-sos, they will form a line, a queue to exchange homes. And obviously, as a English person, this just fills me with... The big one hops out, and then the next biggest one hops in, and so on and so forth, and everyone is lovely taken care of. Now, when we talk about Daimyo Hermita the monster, well, they're nothing like that. Yeah, I just wanted to show you a lot of hermit crabs lining up. Okay, so... You know, it's my video. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do what I want, okay? Here's an asshole crab slowly peeling paint off a pipe. Why is he doing that? I don't know. But you go, little man. 
fuck you got? Seriously, what a, what a prick. I love it. Ah, uh, so focus then. Daimyo Hermitar also wears a shell, hermit crab, but the shell he wears is of a monobloss. Not a Diablos, a monobloss. And I feel bad for the monobloss because it's kind of been forgotten over the years and, well, the reason is for most people it's just less interesting Diablos, a single horn instead of two, a crest of bone akin to a triceratops, but other than that it's still chargy, brutally, physically type, and it really is just one-horned Diablos, and I'm gonna say it, I do prefer the mono to the die, but... I feel like I'm in the minority there. But either way, one of them dies, likely of old age and unchallenged due to the size it would need to grow to to fit a Daimyo Hermita, and the Hermita finds it and moves in. The skull then serves a trifecta of purposes, the primary one, of course, defensive. You see, the rear half of a Hermitar, and indeed real Hermit Crabs, is not encased in rigid shell like... Well, you imagine a crab, right? They are in fact soft, flexible, malleable appendages designed to snake into a gap in a shell, or in this case a skull, hook round and lock it in place, thereby giving it mobile protection from both predators and, in actual hermit crabs cases, the sun. It also then acts offensively, able to reverse at you right quick to impale you upon the long dead horn. The third factor then is of course intimidation and disguise. It looks a lot more, well, terrifying than the crab half, and indeed when it's buried in just the right way, you'd be forgiven, and indeed the guild was tricked for a while too, in thinking the monster itself was the skull on the back. So it's a very effective little way of life. Past that, well, again, crab. It's got the claws, the pincers, it can grab and pin prey and hunters alike, slice through rock with a quick snap, and generally it's how it interacts with the world. Two little grasping claws, like those like those plastic things that you, you push the handle down and then the end comes to get the grabber sticks. That's that's how a crab do with its arms. And they also act then as shield walls when it tucks its body compacts in and makes itself nigh impenetrable, even the sharpest of implements being repelled by this fortress of red. Now, the Hermitars are actually calm, peaceful creatures, much preferring to retreat into shell or use its powerful claws and legs to carve out great gouts of sandy earth and make a hasty, tunnelled escape. Though, when pressed, a Daimyo Hermitar is not afraid to muck in and rip apart the would-be aggressor. Its surprising speed, powered by strengthened legs, to launch itself skyward, thundering back down to Earth with concussive force, <laughs> obliterating those caught under shell. And when truly right ticked off, it starts to froth at the mouth, bubbles pouring forth, it is able to shoot a beam of, well, foamy, bubbly water, blasting back those that are too close. And really, it's a simple affair. It tries to run at you, whether that be the classic sideways walk into a swipe <laughs> or straight towards you to bowl you over with its sheer bulk. It tries its best. It's not a hard monster. It's not beginner tier, but it's nothing really to be too worried about. However, it's a lot of fun to fight. It's quirky. You can see the personality when it's completely holed up in its little protective formation, when it slowly moves its claws to check if you're gone, check if you're still there. Is it safe? It's actually quite sweet in its own way. And when it does its little celebratory fuck you snap snap, fuck you, after it sent you flying, it just feels like it's rubbing salt in the, well, freshly bleeding crab 
based wound, but admittedly simple creatures they are. Then you have the Plum Daimyo Hermitar, which is a Hermitar that is purple. Purple now instead of red. It's a subspecies. Wears a Diablos skull instead of mono. It's the usual slightly bigger, stronger, faster. The main change is its water blasts go from the stream of bubbles to a full-on jet cutter, making it a lot deadlier at range. That's about what is a bit more aggressive. That's about... that's about it. Moving on then to the Shogun. This is a much more deadly force, and by the way, Daimyo Hermitar, Daimyo the feudal lord, then the stronger crab is the shogun, the military leader who the uh, Daimyo is subservient to. It's a nice little naming scheme that they got going on there. So the shogun looks a lot more visually let's say, interesting. The single horn, let's call it, protruding out, serrated itself, and its claws are very much constructed differently, able to unfold into more slender, yet lengthy, serrated claws. This gives him the name the Sickle Crab, and indeed, he very much likes introducing you to his friend, Mr. Reaper. Wearing now a Gravior shell, the titanic armoured of stone, Wyvern spends its time slowly moving through volcanic fields. This is an even better protection, harder by far, and just as intimidating. It can also use this skull as an outlet for a huge jet of water from Presumably, it's abdomen instead of mouth. I mean, it's cool that it comes out the mouth of the skull, but I feel like they didn't think too much about where this would be produced from the crab itself. But it could crawl up ceilings and walls and fire jet beams of water at you, sweeping across the landscape, tearing up the ground as it goes. And woe betide you if you get hit, because you will be beside yourself. Seriously, your legs will be over there, and your torso over there. He is much faster, his shell lighter, yet no less durable, and he has much deadlier moves in his arsenal, sharpening his claws together, leaping at you, and causing you to bleed profusely upon contact. Other than that, he does share a lot of the similar moves, adding his own little spins to them, such as his little spin, where he sweeps round, claws out, and cleaves away everything near him. The Shogun then are a lot more individualistic, having distinct personalities, from actual psychopaths, all the way to let's have a big hug. I'll probably still eat you though. but. The point is, there are shades, and you have to always approach with caution. Caution? Caution! Caution! <laughs> okay, I'm gonna leave that in! If you indeed have to approach at all. Now, you can fully crack and crumble the Gravios shell, exposing his little nubby back for some real slaughter, but upon being exposed, he will immediately dig down and find another from the many bones encased in the earth below. So yeah, I like the Shogun. I prefer the red coloring, but I can't deny the Shogun is distinctly well cooler. I'm a kill it. He also has his own subspecies, the Terra Shogun Senator. This time it's orange. <gasps> yeah, they, they, again, not the most creative. Now, this guy is appreciably faster. Speed is his forte. The lightest of the crabs, though his cost for this, his claws are, well, soft, a lot less deadly than his regular kind. But that doesn't matter too much when he's behind you faster than you can say nanny at the claw protruding from your chest. 
Now, both him and his daimyo counterparts are fairly high up the food chains, not quite apex level, but they're certainly able to handle many of the large monsters they encounter. The Shogun definitely more, though ironically the Shogun preys on much smaller creatures, even down to insects, compared to the Daimyu who likes large herbivores and a good bit of meat. But in either case, monsters generally don't trifle with them, if only because just getting through their shells is not worth the effort for the reward of crab flesh beneath. So, now it is time then for the big one. <laughs> So here's this giant enemy crab. Shen Goren. Gauren? Go Gauren. I'm gonna I'm just gonna say Goren and you're gonna you're gonna deal with that. He is colossal, and that is putting it lightly. He is an absolute unit. Standing as one of the tallest monsters full stop. Taking much inspiration from the Japanese spider crab with legs spindly and lengthy, claws extended to match with scissor-like pincers dawning the ends, able to go through fortresses like butter. Though he is, again, like his smaller little buddies, fairly peaceful. He only causes damage by moving places. He's just too big for that not to be a problem if he happens to choose to go through populated areas. He is known as the Fortress Crab, wearing this time then as his shell Lao Shang Lung's skull, a fully grown adult of mind-boggling scope. You see, the Lao Shang Lung we fight in game, it's a very popular theory, it is actually a juvenile, and the one tangible in-game evidence that points to that being true is the size of the skull on Shen Garen's back, because it is dwarfing the one that we can get stabby with ourselves. Outside of this, then, he isn't all that. A lot more muted in colour, greys and blacks. The flashiest thing that he can do is light up with red, boiling veins of blood in the tips of his feet once you have done enough harm to them, and the agony he feels is nigh unbearable. Now, he will try and stamp and crush the hunters chipping away at him if he gets the chance, and he likes to rear up to full height and act as a natural watchtower, scanning the surrounding environs for prey and a place to stay, because indeed he does like to just sit curled up in his shell, passing away the days, thinking, I guess, crab thoughts. I'm gonna f***ing kill you! Its signature weapon then, outside, of course, it's just general size, is acid. It can form a great glob of the stuff within the skull and launch it out like artillery bombardment, melting through stone at a rate that would make alien blood jealous. So, needless to say, armor does not fare well and you have hunters who have been fused and encased to their very equipment after taking a direct hit, dying, screaming, in pain. It's always been a shame that Shen's not really made many appearances, because I, I do have a soft spot for him, as I do with all of the crabs. But he isn't the most interesting fight, I can't deny. You just kind of wail on him, and he walks forward, and it's fine, it's an okay spectacle once, but... Uh, I don't know, it's cool to have such a ginormous crab in the game, like, imagine when this guy molts, you could live in the shell he leaves behind. Talk about a sheltered life, if, if you did. I just want one, I just, this entire, I just want one. Give me one. 
And lastly then, I should touch on the Deviant. Daimyo Hermitar has the Stone Fist Hermitar, which is a larger than normal one which has one claw very much enlarged, hence the Stone Fist. It's stronger, faster, all of that good stuff. Tiny different colouring and it can do a few extra spinny moves and also move in the air after it's jumped to, to make it a bit more deadly. It's not the most interesting deviant in the world, just coming about from a mutation while young. The claws never stopped growing at an accelerated rate to the rest of the body, hardened a lot more, nigh impenetrable to any kind of weaponry. It's, it's effective. Yay! I mean, admittedly, I, I do really like it, but look, it's not the craziest of changes. And then we have, of course, the Rust Razor Shogun, who uses a Glavenous Skull instead of Gravios, sharpening his own claws in the Whetstone-esque jaw of his dead compatriot, and, well, has a lot of fun being a budding mathematician, dividing everything in sight in half. His claws are one of the sharpest natural weapons just in Monster Hunter full stop. But he has to keep sharpening them, otherwise they will deteriorate, rust, and fall apart. Such is the cost for his quite literal addiction to grinding his bladed arms against the skull. But it is a lot of fun both to see that skull in his back and just face the onslaught of bladed sparks as he sharpens his way to bleeding you out. So, world then, I, I guess what I want to say is, what in world is even remotely like the giant crab monsters? Nothing, exactly, that's the point, and I'm torn because they would add Undoubtedly a variety that nothing else could, a daimyo in the desert, a shogun in the recess, I think that Shengaren wouldn't work too well, they'd have to essentially redesign the entire monster for it to be anywhere near engaging in world style, but the other two definitely could make an appearance, and I... Ah, the thing that's holding me back from saying, yes, go for it, is that they are just giant crabs, and... I particularly like them for the reasons I've spent a lot of time just waffling at you, just really talking at your face, but if you're seeing them for the first time in this video, or you've not really had any personal experience with them, are you thinking, yes, or are you thinking, ah, it's a crab, it's okay, and that's my worry, but they would definitely work, again, they're very believable, especially Daimyo, it's a fucking big crab, I don't know if I've got that across, Get yeah, how just crabby these crabs are crabbing. They're very crabtastic. And I... Ugh, I don't know. I personally would really like it. I don't think it would be bad as a fun extra monster to stuff into an eventual G-Rank expansion. And it's definitely along the lines of some of the most variety variety they could ever add. Along with the Insecty monsters, they are the most just purely, in terms of the frame, different to everything else, well, in the game game. So you'll have to let me know what your feelings are when it comes to this lovely group of critters. For now, my name has been Josh. Like if you have enjoyed this, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time. What would you like for lore? Let me know. A good boy. I got a big bag of crabs here. Body.